Watch what happens when two friends fly together without properly planning cockpit resource management. Hey guys, Tarek Myerface here. Uh, I don't have a proper mic, so apologies for the audio quality and uh, apologies because I wasn't able to sync the two cameras. Unfortunately, they filmed at different audio sample rates and for some reason it messes everything up. I've tried conversions, I've tried a bunch of stuff. So we'll be using just the Garmin Verbs view except for now where you can see me talking to Sana. Sana is a friend of mine. She did the ATPL theory in the same school as I did. That is Bristol Ground School and she also lives in Paris and is also doing her hour building. So I decided to do a flight with her. Now uh, there are quite a few points to, uh, to clear up and that is uh, we're flying in an aircraft which is in my club. So I'm pilot in command and that's why I'm in the left seat and I seem like I am bossing her around and stuff. That's not what I wanted to uh, come across as I was doing, so that's a mistake of mine, but we'll talk about this later. But basically, uh, it's flying in my air club, so I'm teaching her the SOPs of my school, and that's why she's being very patient with me and just listening to what I have to say. Anyways, we're gonna switch to the Garmin Verb camera now, and let's go look at the flight. So first off, Sana and I are talking and we're briefing each other on the weather, the information, the runway that's being active, etc. And uh, one thing I'll say is that we didn't uh, do proper planning for cockpit resource management. And you will see how it tricks us a lot of times. So it's really important to have properly plan cockpit resource management. When we're the instructor, it's quite kind of easy. We know he's the pilot in command most of the time and that he will make the ultimate decision in many things. But um, when you're with another pilot, things are a little bit more complicated and you need to go ahead and divide out the tasks, who's going to talk to ATC, who's going to fly the aircraft, who's going to navigate, etc. And we didn't do that. And you see that we'll be switching roles and stepping on each other's toes. And uh, it's, it's, it's my fault and maybe a little bit Santa's fault, but mostly me as pilot in command, I should have uh, made that clear in the beginning. One thing I will say though is that flying with Sana was a lot of fun. She was very patient, very kind, and we also had a very similar way of functioning in the cockpit even though it clashed every now and then simply because we didn't sort out our communication early on. Alors, les essais moteurs, les freins au pied, instrument moteur en plage vert, donc la température. C'est bon. Euh, régime moteur, donc 1800 tours. Mobilité de l'avion est vérifiée. Okay. So this is one example of a good CRM. So I am familiar with the aircraft and Sana isn't. So in this case, she takes a checklist and starts reading the items out whilst I carry them out. It helps because it makes the whole pre-flight prep, uh, preparation of the aircraft a lot smoother than it normally would go if as a single pilot. And at the same time, Sana learns a little bit about the aircraft we're flying. This is a Cessna 172, by the way, and that's the one I used to fly uh, in the Euro trip. More on that later. Fox Charlie, Charlie, sa ligne piste 11 droite pour départ à l'ouest, navigation vert et temps, Saint-Cyr. Ok. On vérifie qu'il n'y a personne en finale, personne de l'autre côté, c'est bon. C'est info de Fox Romain Wixray, bonjour. Oh là là. Oh, on essaye le. On veut pas rester ici. Airspeed alive. Top zoom en base de la gauche. bravo en course finale. Piste 11 gauche pour un complet retour pour l'arrêt. Five knots. On fait gaffe au trafic à gauche qui va faire un toucher. Correction pour un final petit hausse droite pour un complet. Ça fait pas de Fox Data. Ok, on peut chercher 69. On va faire un peu tourner. Versailles c'est juste devant. On monte 10 degrés, on baisse le nez pour accélérer et on remonte. 
Et on tourne. So one of the reasons Asana came on this flight is because she wants to practice her English radio telephony. And the reason we were speaking French at the airfield was because it was uncontrolled. And in France, most of the airfields were uncontrolled or when they don't have control, uh, require you to only speak in French. But now we're going to talk to Paris Information specifically just so that she can practice speaking in English. Paris Information from Fox Hotel Echo Charlie Charlie. Good evening. Echo Charlie Charlie, Paris Information, good evening. Uh, Paris Information from Charlie Charlie, uh, Cessna 172 from uh, uh, Saint Cyr uh, to Etampes. Uh, we are one minute from uh, Hall in DB. Charlie Charlie, Cook 7002, please. Sun uh, 7200. Seven zero zero two. Seven zero zero two. Uh, Charlie, Charlie, thank you. Zero, zero. So as you can see, Sana did a really good job speaking uh, in English on the radio. Obviously, she tried to read back a transponder code she wasn't sure of when she could have simply just asked for it again. But that's a mistake most pilots do, irrelevant of which language they're speaking in. So kudos to Sana. Ah, t'as bien fait la radio. Pas de euh, Ce que te dis, euh, tu dis Cessna 172. Ah, en anglais. Pas, pas one, 172. Ok. Parce qu'on utilise, on, normalement, on dit les numéros séparément. D'accord. Ok, mais à part ça, très bien. One thing I will say is that I was not a very good uh, PIC. I let Sana fly very little. The only times I let her fly was when she was having difficulty with the GPS, so I programmed it for her. And that's something I realized after the flight, so I made sure not to repeat that mistake with my friends in my other flights. Oh, yeah. Now what you're about to listen is really bad cockpit resource management. Sana and I have just agreed that it's time to leave the Paris information frequency so that we can move over to the Saint-Cyr ATIS frequency so that we can listen to the information. So I go ahead and call up Paris information. However, as had been previously agreed, Sana is on this flight to practice her English radio telephony. And she wasn't listening to me talking to Paris Information because she was too busy writing a note or something. And so right after I call Paris Information, she calls them, which pisses off the controller because she thinks we're being impatient. And this is the result. Paris Information, Fox Charlie Charlie. Charlie, Charlie, to leave the frequency? Attends. Yes, uh, Charlie, Charlie, you may leave 7,000 on the scope. Bye bye. <laughs> 7,000, Charlie, Charlie. Oh, bye bye. As you can see, I realized our mistake straight away telling uh, Sana to hold on. But by then, of course, the mistake was too late, so Sana handled the situation really well. In fact, I don't even think she noticed how annoyed the controller was. I did, however, so you can hear me laughing in the background. Well, that was the entire flight. Uh, well, obviously not the entire thing. Part of the flight got lost. Uh, the Garmin verb shut down and stuff. And there's also the fact that I didn't use the GoPro footage, which is really a shame to me. Anyways, uh, 
I'm actually a little embarrassed by the way things turned out in this slide, despite the fact that we had a great time. Sana and I have a really, really good cohesion in the cockpit, uh, sorry, in the flight deck, and uh, it was really cool to fly with another pilot who was with about the same amount of experience, had the same amount of experience as I had, a, a bit more than I do. Uh, but I really did override her a lot of times, not listening to what she had to say, which I think was a big mistake on my part. I should learn from other people, and I should have learned from Sana, but instead I kept on uh, basically putting my authority out there. I'm the PIC, and I really shouldn't have done that. Uh, there was quite poor cockpit resource management, and I definitely learned from this flight, and I learned even more from watching this video. Uh, but yeah, I mean, considering how poor the uh, the cockpit resource management was, the flight was actually really smooth and a lot of fun, and Sana really is a great person to fly with. She's very patient, and uh, despite the fact that she has more experience than I do, she kept on listening to everything I had to say, and she did a really good job on the radio telephony in English, so kudos to Sana. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you liked it, please subscribe and hit the like button, but more importantly, share it, as that's what really helped me. And, uh, well, that's it, really. I'm Tarek Merryface. Uh, I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.